Live, getting results. This is New 6 at Noon. Right now at noon, the man accused of killing a Winter Park caretaker just showed up in court facing charges of first degree murder and kidnapping. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Bridget Ellison. And I'm Justin Mormuth, and we will have that story in just a moment. But first, we're monitoring the progress on bills to prevent distracted driving in Florida. The Florida Senate will be considering its version of the House bill that passed yesterday. The Senate bill would make Florida a hands-free state behind the wheel. Yesterday, the House passed its version, which only focuses on texting while driving. Now, the vote came after heated debate over possible racial profiling. Several lawmakers in the House said that they were worried about how a texting and driving law would be enforced. But after hours of discussion, only nine of them voted against the bill, with an overwhelming majority showing support. News 6 anchor Matt Austin is in Tallahassee right now, and he'll be providing updates on the bill's progress throughout the day. In the meantime, you can read more about our driving change initiative on ClickOrlando.com. Breaking this hour, a man charged with murder and a Winter Park caretaker's death just walked into an Orange County courtroom. Scott Nelson's waiting for the judge to decide whether he's competent to stand trial more than a year after his arrest. News 6's Ezzy Castro joins us live now from the courthouse. Ezzy, Nelson can face the death penalty in the 2017 murder. That's right, Bridget. And when we first got here, we were told that Scott Nelson had refused to show up to this hearing. And once his case was called out, the attorneys met with the judge. And after a long recess, he eventually showed up just about an hour ago. Now, Nelson's competency hearing has been on hold for several months now after his attorneys argued that he was not competent to stand for trial. Now we know he wrote several letters to the judge saying he was starving in the Orange County Jail and that he had suffered from mental illness. Now Nelson's accused of kidnapping and murdering Winter Park caretaker Jennifer Fulford in September 2017. Her body was found days later along Colonial Drive in West Orange County. Nelson is facing multiple charges right now and could face the death penalty if convicted of first degree murder. And right now, a, a witness is testifying known as a doctor who has evaluated Nelson while he's been in jail. We do have a crew upstairs taking over for us and they will bring you the latest starting at new six at four. But for now, live in the Orange County, J uh, Orange County Courthouse, Ezzy Castro getting results, new six. Thank you for the update, Ezzy. Now to a traffic alert on I-4 eastbound in Maitland. It is now back open. This is a live look at Maitland Boulevard where an overturned tractor trailer forced officials to shut down the interstate this morning for hours. And here's a look at that backup from this morning. Woof. The crash happened just after 6 a.m. when a semi hauling what appeared to be lumber tipped over, spilling wood across the interstate. It is not clear whether anyone was hurt. Meantime, the westbound ramp on I-4 at Maitland Boulevard is set to open in just a few days. It's all part of the I-4 Ultimate Project, expanding 21 miles of the interstate. New 6's Mark Lehman has the details on the latest change along I-4. Transportation officials say this isn't necessarily a major change, but it's one that could catch a lot of drivers off guard. This ramp right here is where we're talking about. And all this is happening in a spot that's seen some of the biggest changes when it comes to the I-4 Ultimate Project. Well, it's been a mess. Yes, it's, it's been a mess. And drivers in Maitland are gearing up for another shift as workers will be opening the seventh new ramp since construction began. Quite a transformation. I mean, a completely different road. You wouldn't even recognize it. For this one, FDOT will be permanently closing the surface street between Keller and Lake Destiny Road. That means drivers on eastbound Maitland Boulevard will be seeing something different when getting onto westbound I-4. So as you're heading towards I-4, you'll need to get up into those elevated lanes and then pair off to the right onto a new permanent ramp. For those down on Lake Destiny, the current ramp will remain open, but this change will put work one step closer to the eventual completion of what's been a painstaking overhaul. There's some light at the end of the tunnel, but we're still looking at six months to a year probably until all the work is done here in Maitland. I know the ultimate goal of this is to improve things. so. Um, I guess if you have to put up with the construction to make it better. Now this right here is a tricky spot to keep in mind when you're driving through this area as three lanes of traffic will be merging all at once. This new on ramp to I-4 westbound is scheduled to open first thing Friday morning. In Maitland, Mark Lehman getting results, New 6. Now here's a live look over downtown Orlando. Nice and clear skies out there as it gets ready to get hot out there. Oh yeah. <laughs> 
If it's hot enough for you now, just wait. Meteorologist Troy Bridges is here now with your pinpoint accurate forecast, taking us to the beach. Yeah, it's a good place to go today. The water temperature is getting in the upper 70s, near 80 degrees. Look at all those folks at Daytona Beach getting out and enjoying this gorgeous day. Lots of sunshine. Now we are seeing a little bit of a change today, adding a little bit more humidity to the air, and that's going to make it feel a little warmer. Right now it's 80 at Daytona Beach, feeling more like 81 degrees. The actual high today later on getting near 90. We're at 79 right now in Sanford, right now 79 in Melbourne at 78 in Ocala. Temperatures are heating up to 88 degrees by 3 o'clock with a few additional clouds today, but not very many. Certainly no rain, but we will see changes come. As more humid air works in, it will feel more like the mid-90s tomorrow, hotter than today, and then rain rolls in for Friday. Will it be like last weekend? We'll talk more about what to expect in the coming days straight ahead. See you in a few. Thanks, Troy. Developing this afternoon, an I-4 rest stop shooting mystery solved. Yeah, deputies say it was actually a cover-up. A wild story here. We're told a man claimed that someone shot him at the rest stop at 434 in Longwood early yesterday after he accidentally fired his weapon inside his vehicle around 3 a.m. The man is expected to be okay. Now, deputies say he initially claimed someone shot him, but they later learned that the man accidentally fired his own weapon and then shot up his car to make it appear like someone else opened fire. The man faces charges of making a false report and discharging a weapon. Also developing a suspect shot by police after video shows him jumping the counter at a Daytona Beach Walgreens while holding a rifle in front of frightened workers and customers. One officer opened fire and shot this man in the backside, Lewis Curler. He was released from the hospital and booked into jail. He's expected to face a judge this afternoon. And we're still working to learn the identity of a 17-year-old shot and rushed to the hospital in East Orange County. Deputies later caught the man they say pulled the trigger. Deputies say the teen got into a fight with another man in Bithlow more than twice his age. A 38-year-old, we're told, shot him. Deputies responded to the call around 11.30 last night and found the 17-year-old with life-threatening injuries now in stable condition, recovering in a hospital. The suspect has been arrested, but deputies have not released his name. The Orlando Magic officially ended their run in the NBA playoffs. Yeah, the Magic lost last night again to the Toronto Raptors. The team needed to win against Toronto to continue that playoff run, but... The Raptors play great. They're a little too good. Sending the Magic home. Final score 115 to 96. So the Magic's first trip to the playoffs in seven years ends like it did in 2012 in the first round. But the team says they'll be back and that they are only getting better. A bright future ahead for the Orlando Magic. They have some decisions to make, though, going forward as mm -hmm. far as next season's roster is concerned. So we'll be watching that. But yep. looks good for the Magic's future. Come back hungry. That's right. Well, coming up next, new allegations of abuse within the Boy Scouts. The testimony looking into more than 12,000 cases spanning decades. Plus, officials say nine terrorists, including one woman, are responsible for killing more than 300 people, 350 people, in the Sri Lanka terror attacks. What President Trump said about the new developments within the last hour. You're watching News 6 at noon, getting results. We'll be right back. This portion of the news is sponsored by the Florida Lottery. The death toll from the Easter Sunday bombings in Sri Lanka has risen to 359, and authorities say they aren't out of the danger yet. They're worried more suicide bombers may be ready to strike. Ian Lee reports from the White House on the aftermath of those bombings. New security video shows two suspected suicide bombers inside one of the luxury hotels blown up in Sri Lanka on Easter Sunday. Police say the men were brothers and sons of a wealthy local businessman who is now in custody along with more than 50 others. But authorities warn the danger isn't over. There are still talks of, uh, you know, that, you know, some of these suicide bombers might be roaming around. ISIS released this video claiming responsibility for the coordinated attacks. The man in the middle, known to authorities, is believed to be the mastermind. The local Muslim council says the government knew about the threat but did nothing. I don't think they took this threat seriously enough. Foreign intelligence agencies repeatedly warned of an upcoming attack, even up to the final minutes. We were told that, you know, even 10 minutes before the blast, uh, Indian uh, intelligence had said that this is going to happen. Sri Lanka's president fired two of his top security officials in the aftermath. As families continue to bury their relatives, Uncertainty persists. Some Muslims are now fleeing their homes, fearing revenge attacks. 
While Christians fear these bombings were just the beginning. Ian Lee, CBS News. Developing closer to home now, the Boy Scouts of America is concerned about its financial future as more states move toward adjusting statute of limitations laws for sexual abuse lawsuits. It's all as new allegations were announced against one of the country's most long-standing institutions. Attorneys claim court testimony revealed thousands of cases of alleged sex abuse dating all the way back to the 1940s. Attorney Jeffrey Anderson, a longtime advocate for sex abuse victims, cited recent testimony from a woman he says was hired by the Boy Scouts to look into their so-called perversion files. He says more than 12,000 cases of possible child sex abuse have surfaced. Now, in a statement, the Boy Scouts of America said, quote, at no time have we ever knowingly allowed a perpetrator to work with youth, and we mandate that all leaders, volunteers, and staff members nationwide immediately report any abuse allegation to law enforcement. Now, Anderson says changes are coming to the statute of limitations laws in New York this summer, and that should make it easier to prosecute such cases. Now, here's a live look over Daytona Beach. It is nice and crowded out Ooh, there, yeah. Troy, and uh, they have the right idea because that's one way to cool off. We are talking about some heat today and tomorrow. Temperatures getting into the upper 80s. We will have a rip current risk in the moderate category, but other than that, not a bad day to mm -hmm. get out. At a pool or a beach, no rip currents in the pool, right? Here's why. We're talking about a lot of heat in the coming days. Today, the average high is 84. We're getting up to 88. Tomorrow, getting up to 90, and then back closer to our average at 85 on Friday. The problem is we're going to be dealing with some rain. That's part of the reason temperatures won't be as hot on Friday. But we did add some fans and air conditioners right there on that graphic because they're going to be cranking as we head into the next few days. Again, Friday, though, we're pinpointing changes with a new front. Now, it will be a weak front, not changing our temperatures a whole bunch, but it will bring a chance for a few thunderstorms. Not as bad as last Friday, but we can't rule out a couple of stronger thunderstorms. Here's the timeline as we show you the future radar. There's Friday at six in the morning, moving into the Big Bend area of Florida and then eventually breaking up a bit as it's getting closer and moving right along I-4 through the late morning hours and then early afternoon. By 4 p.m., a large part of central Florida seeing some rain. Again, this is on Friday, so we have a couple of days before the rain builds in. It will likely weaken as it moves into central Florida, but there's the chance for some stronger wind gust and some lightning. There's 11 p.m. on Friday, though. We clear it out, so for your Saturday and your Sunday, we are looking pretty good for outdoor activities. We'll talk more about that in your planning forecast, but here's a live view of downtown Orlando with the Orlando Health Cam, and just as predicted at 456 this morning, if you were tuned in with us, we are seeing those high thin cirrus clouds way up in the atmosphere where the planes fly. It's much colder up there and those ice crystals really something the sun can filter right through. Temperatures though heating up. We're at 80. It feels like 81 because we are adding more humid air into the atmosphere and you'll feel that sticky air especially into the next couple of days. It's 79 in Sanford right now. 79 in Melbourne. 78 is the temperature in Ocala. It's 80 at Daytona Beach. But here's a look at the pinpoint accurate forecast. Your forecast brought to you by Dell Air Heating and Air Conditioning. Lots of sunshine today, but again, more of those high thin cirrus clouds that the sun will filter through. No rain chances and a high of 88, four degrees above that average of 84. We're still at 85 by 5 p.m. and then 81 at 6 p.m. Then for tonight, mostly clear skies. We'll see a few of those high thin clouds, 73 at 9 o'clock, and then 68 will be the temperature at 11 o'clock tonight. So here's the clouds and rain forecast as we step you through today. Notice through the afternoon and evening, 6 p.m., the gray, the white there, those high thin clouds that we'll see. One or two of those fair weather cumulus clouds, but not a lot of cloud cover overnight. And then early in the morning tomorrow, we'll see a few additional clouds, and they'll help a little bit to act as a blanket to keep temperatures a little mild in the early morning hours tomorrow. So no 40s and 50s. 60 to start in Ocala early tomorrow morning. We'll drop to 60 in Orlando, 63 in Sanford, 62 in Daytona Beach. But let's check out that seven day forecast and get results. And as we do, you will see those rain chances out of the picture for the next couple of days. Of course, returning to 60% on Friday, but by the weekend, only a 10% chance on Saturday, 20% Sunday with highs in the mid 80s. So the weekend looking pretty good, but another wet, at least Friday afternoon mm. to deal with. But again, not as bad as last Friday. Deja vu. There we go. Isn't that the timing, right? <laughs> All right, Troy, thanks. Well, remember, you can get the latest weather alerts on your phone or tablet with our free Pinpoint Weather app. 
Just download it by searching WKMG in your app store. Have you ever wanted to be on the hit CBS show Survivor? Well, here is your chance. Auditions are coming up this Sunday at Victory Casino Cruises at Port Canaveral from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. To see the eligibility rules and fill out the necessary forms, go to ClickOrlando.com. Look for the link on our homepage. Next at noon, a disease linked to tainted ground beef. Yeah, 10 states, including Florida, are affected, making more than 100 people sick. The work health officials are doing to figure out where it started. And coming up, all new at 5. Recently, deputies here in Brevard County spent the day checking gas pumps for skimmers and found almost two dozen skimmers inside the pumps. The technology the bad guys are using these days is incredible, but so is the way that deputies are catching them and getting crime results. I'm Eric Von Aiken with this story today at 5. A new consumer alert now warning about ground beef is expanding. It may be connected to an E. coli outbreak in the U.S. So the disease is linked to tainted ground beef eaten at homes and restaurants. It's spread to 10 states so far, including here in Florida. Federal health officials say more than 150 people have been affected by this with the E. coli. 20 of them had to be hospitalized. Right now, health officials are trying to figure out where the outbreak stems from. But at this point, no supplier, distributor or brand has been identified. Two drugstores are taking a stance against teen vaping by raising the tobacco buying age in their stores. Rite Aid and Walgreens announced they both plan to raise the age to 21. Rite Aid says the change will be rolled out within the next three months. Walgreens says their new policy goes into effect September 1st. Next at noon, words you may already be using are now officially in the dictionary. More than 600 were just added. How buzzy is grabbing attention. I could have used that when I was playing Words with Friends. And the color that now has a double meaning. Thing you need. Hundreds of new words can now be found in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Among them, buzzy, which is something or someone drawing a lot of attention. Mm. Oh, there's mm -hmm. a buzz about him. That's right. what I right. get it now. Okay. Another is a bottle episode, a relatively cheap episode of a TV show that usually sticks to a single setting. Mm. Now's a word for that. Mm. And purple's no longer just the color in the dictionary. It also refers to an area that has an even amount of Republicans and Democrats. You see that, the blue and the mm -hmm. red make I've purple. I've heard of that, yes. Mm -hmm. And there are more than 600 newly added words and phrases. 600? Mm -hmm. Webster is acting like they wrote the dictionary or something, <laughs> adding all right. these new words. I just found out there were some from last year that I thought should be new. Like, I didn't even know. Like. Our producer was yeah. telling us. Dumpster like dumpster fire. fire, we've heard that yeah. before. Right. Something's not now going it's well. Now it is technically a word. It is technically yeah. a word. As of last year, right? What's not a word is flustrated, and that is a word that only my mom will say. Oh, no. You combine flustered and frustrated. Right, yeah. right. Flustrated. There are a lot of words we do like that, that we yeah. combine. Swole in, is in there accent. now. Swole means you you've been working out. Up. You get muscles, mm -hmm. yeah. like Justin over there. <laughs> we are going to be pinpointing Opposite. some heat, so you know what we say. Sun's out, guns out if you're swole. Oh. Yeah, Spaghetti like out. 88 <laughs> will be the afternoon high today. 90 on your Thursday. So a lot of heat the next couple of days. And then we deal with some rain and even a few thunderstorms at 60% on Friday afternoon. Then minimal rain chances at only 10% on Saturday, 20% on Sunday with highs right back in the mid 80s. And then we're dry Monday and Tuesday of next week. So mm. it's not so great that we wedge some rain for the end of the week and the weekend. But rain chances not all that high for Saturday and Sunday. A not perfect bad. forecast, almost. Not Friday. <laughs> Just about. Yeah. More news and weather right here at 4. We always break news on clickorlando.com. Hope you have a great afternoon. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Take care.